Hi everyone and welcome to a new issue of the WASP development log. Uh, in this issue I want to present you two new features that I introduced in the WASP in the version 0.4.003 of WASP which will allow you to achieve some new things with WASP. And these two things are the first one is the possibilities to save and load fields so to save file, uh, fields to a file and then load them back while the second uh, feature is the possibility of using a part catalog to predefine the number of parts that you want to use in an aggregation. Let's take a look at these features. So for the first one I have here a simple field based aggregation where if you see I have this field which is generated simply based on the distance of one curve and as you know you all know uh, calculating a field of course takes a pretty significant amount of time especially when you have a very large field with a very large number of points or you're calculating a distance from a very large number of geometries. So what I introduced in the latest version of WASP is the possibility of using a component that is called save field file. And what you can do is you can bring this component in once you generated your field and you can plug your fields directly in there. You can then provide a path where to save this file and in my case I'm going to be saving it in the uh, path where I have the same file so you're going to create a, a panel and add this path in there and connect it to path and then you can choose a name for your field and in this case what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call it my field and plug this to the name and now this is going to compute for a little bit as it's generating a, represent a textual representation of this file. And finally we take a button, connect it to the save button. Again we have to wait a little bit. And if now we click this button, what's going to happen is that this field will be converted to a text and this text file will be written to a JSON file which is a sort of a dictionary file which where the values are organized with different keys and so if we go now and look in our folder you see that we have a file that has been generated that is called myField.json and if now I right click on this file and I open it with a text editor it's going to open as a one single big line of of text but just for you to know if you have a plugin that can format JSON files you will actually see that this file is a file which has a specific structure which contains all the information we need to recreate this field from this file so it's going to contain the resolution of the field the name of it the count in all directions the individual values for each point as well as the position of each point in the field and also it's going to have a mesh representation of the boundaries of this field. So if now we go back to Grasshopper, what we can actually do if, let's say, you've been working on a while on this field and now you're satisfied with it and you don't want to uh, change it anymore, you can actually go to the aggregation tab, you can get load file field from file, and what you can do with this component is you can, for example, create a file path component in Grasshopper where you can right click on it and go to select one existing file you can then navigate to the folder where this file is and select it and this is going to import the path to that field if you now provide this field here the field will be automatically recreated without the need of recomputing all the geometry that is associated with it. Just for you to see that this is the same exact field, I can actually plug this field to the deconstruct field component and turn the representation on and you will see that we actually recreated the same exact file. And what we can actually do now is we can take this plug it in the field input and if I go on and reset my aggregation you'll see that the aggregation gets recomputed exactly in the same way and what I can actually do now is I can take this whole thing that I have in here I can delete it and I can run my file using just this uh, little component here 
and so the field will be every time recreated. So this allows you to do several things. It allows you to uh, avoid recomputing a field every time you load a file. It allows you to share your field with your colleagues, your co-workers, and uh, your study colleagues, and uh, work in contemporary. You can have two people in a team where one of them is working exclusively on generating the field, and the second person is just loading the field from the file without ignoring how the field is created and just working on the aggregation that can be done. So in this way, you can then share the file. You could send the file out. You could, If you have problems with a field aggregation, you could, for example, send the file to me and I could take a look what's wrong with it. And so even though it's not a feature that adds much to Wasp in terms of what you can achieve, it definitely allows you to have a more efficient and uh, focused workflow. Now, let's move to the second feature, which is a feature that a lot of people have been asking for. And this feature is a part catalog. So what a part catalog is, is a component that will allow you to specify the specific number of each part type that you want to add in a stochastic aggregation. So in this case, I have here an aggregation which contains two parts, where each part is independent and has its own connections and its own name defined here. And then what we are able to do is we are able to run this aggregation and generate a variety of outcomes. So I could actually scale it, make it bigger or smaller, and so on. Now what we can do is if we go to the WASP tab and we go under parts, you'll find a new component that has been added in this uh, version, which is called the part catalog. So what this component does, it's a very simple component, and it takes two inputs. The first input is the parts that you have. So in this case, I have part P and part C. And then the second input that it's going to take is a list of numbers where each number represents how many parts, how many times you want to repeat this part in an aggregation. For example, I'm going to create a slider, set it to 25, and another slider, set it to, let's say, 35. I'm going to merge these two sliders, just to make sure that I follow the order. And so what I'm actually doing now when I connect this to the number, as you can see in the description, you can see that I am creating a catalog which says that I'm going to have 35 times the part C and 25 times the part P. So if now you create the new stochastic aggregation component that you will find with the version 043, you actually will see that it has a new input right next to the seed that was added in the previous version, and that's an input to add a catalog. If we plug a catalog in here right now, and we then reset the aggregation, you'll see that the aggregation is recreated, and if we go and look, we have 25 parts of type P and 35 parts of type C. You will also see that the component turns orange, and the reason for that is that in this case, I was asking to the aggregation to create 140 part, but I provided a catalog, which in total would just contain 60 parts. So what the component is telling me is that, hey, you are demanding more parts than what I can create. So you can see now that I can go and change this catalog and say, for example, that I'm gonna want just one part of type P. And if now I do that, you see that effectively I create an aggregation where I have just type C parts and one of type P. If I would say I want 10 and 10, you will get that. So this is a little addition and it's still in a slightly experimental mode. And what I'm gonna do in a future version is I'm gonna also provide um, a possibility of defining whether the catalog is a limited catalog, meaning that it's gonna create just 20 parts if I provide a total number of 20 parts, or whether we wanna use these numbers just as proportions between the parts, and then the total number of parts would be still governed by this slider. So this is it for this uh, issue of the development logs. I hope you will enjoy these new additions. Please let me know in the comments or on Discord uh, what do you think about these new features and if you think that anything should be changed or should be implemented in a different way. And enjoy using it and hope this is going to improve your experience with WASP. 
See you in the next issue. Bye.